would you want a Gaddafi or an Arafat or a Castro to be a future president of South Africa? One of the mistakes which some political analysts make is to think that their enemies should be our enemies. that we can and we will never do. We have our own struggle which we are conducting. We are grateful to the world for supporting our struggle. But nevertheless, we are an independent organization with its own policy. And the attitude of every country towards our attitude towards any country is determined by the attitude of that country to our struggle. Yasa <laughs> Arafat. Colonel Gaddafi, Fidel Castro, support our struggle to the hilt. There is no reason whatsoever why we should have any hesitation about hailing their commitment to human rights as they are being demanded in South Africa. Our attitude is based solely on the fact that they fully support the anti-apartheid struggle. They do not support it only in rhetoric. They are placing resources at our disposal for us to win the struggle. That is the position. <laughs> Having said that, I think I would be dishonest if I did not express profound disappointment with the answer that Mr. Mandela gave to the previous question, because it suggests a certain degree of amorality. The, it suggests that the what these people do in their own countries, what a Gaddafi does in Libya, what a, what a uh, Castro does in Cuba, is totally irrelevant even in terms of the issue of, of human rights as long as they support the cause of the ANC. I hope that is not what Mr. Mandela meant, and I would hope that he would clarify that issue further. Mr. Mandela. And at the same time, want me to be involved in the internal affairs of Libya and uh, uh, Cuba. I refuse to do that. As far as Yasser Arafat is concerned, I explained to Mr. Sidney that we identify with the PLO because just like ourselves, they are fighting for the right of self-determination. I went further, however, to say that the support for Yasser Arafat in his struggle does not mean that the ANC has ever doubted the right of Israel to exist as a state legally. We have stood quite openly and firmly 
for the right of that state to exist within secured borders. But, of course, as I said to Mr. Signal in Geneva and others, that we carefully define what we mean by secure borders. We do not mean that uh, Israel has the right to retain the territories they conquered from the Arab world like the Gaza Strip, the Golan Heights, and the West Bank. We don't agree with that. Those territories should be returned to the Arab people. Mr. Mandela. I also explained to Mr. Sigmund and company that in our organization, we have Jews. In fact, Mr. Gaddafi did not allow us to open our offices in Libya precisely because we had the courage to say to him, we work with the Jews in our organization. And he didn't uh, allow us to open an office until February this year when he had to accept us as we are. We are not prepared to be swayed by anybody. We have an independent policy which we are certain no matter with whom we discuss. A Jewish leader have any doubts about our stand, I am prepared to address them and to allay their concern because they are a very important community both in South Africa and of course in the States. And I'm prepared to iron out any differences that might exist, but they must know what our stand is. Arafat is a comrade in arms, and we treat him as such. And as I have said, we have many Jews, uh, members of the Jewish community in our struggle and they have occupied very top positions. But that does not mean to say that uh, the enemies of Israel are our enemies. We refuse to take that position. You can call it being political or uh, a moral question, but uh, for anybody who changes his principles depending on whom he is dealing, that is not a man who can lead a nation. <laughs>